Despite Disney acquiring the rights to the Alien franchise in 2019, the company has been deliberate in its approach before engaging its creative team to work on the new Alien comics. This state of inactivity, however, experienced a shift not long ago. On March 24, 2021, Marvel Comics unveiled the inaugural issue of the ongoing Alien comic series, penned by Philip Kennedy Johnson and illustrated by Salvador La Roca. These comics feature multiple arcs and narratives so rich and expansive that they seem almost like potential masterpieces, not just because they deepen the lore, but also because they tackle several critical issues. The first story arc introduces us to Gabriel Cruz, the only known human to have survived the extraction of a chestburster embryo implanted by a facehugger. Tragedy struck Gabriel early on when one of his children perished in a ventilation shaft accident at the Epsilon Orbital Research and Development Station. However, as a dedicated man, Gabriel continued his service to Wayland yutani and, after many years, retired as head of security. Returning to Earth, Gabriel is visited by his surviving son, Danny, but this visit has ulterior motives. Danny intends to steal Gabriel's security card so that he and his anti-corporate group can infiltrate Epsilon, capture evidence of the activities there, and expose Waylon Yutani's secrets to the world. Unanticipated by Danny, his fiancée Iris, and the rest of their team, a swarm of xenomorphs are awaiting them on Epsilon. It wasn't long before Ted Reynolds, the current chief of the Epsilon station, made an abrupt visit to Gabriel, informing him of the grim situation. He warns Gabriel that if he fails to retrieve the alpha specimen from Epsilon, both he and Danny would face charges of corporate espionage. Gabriel departs Earth, accompanied by two young colonial marines. Upon arrival at Epsilon, he faces a nightmarish reality. The station is overrun with death and alien impregnation, and the only survivor is Danny's fiance and team leader, Iris. To Gabriel's dismay, he arrives too late to prevent his son Danny from being subjected to a facehugger's embrace. The narrative then unfolds around Gabriel's desperate efforts to save his son from the alien threat within. As the story progresses, it's revealed that Danny's lover, Iris, is actually a free-thinking synthetic who turned against Whale and Yutani and later joined the anti-corporate resistance. She posits a chilling vision with the chestburster within Danny. The future could hinge on the brink of a post-organic utopia or a world devoid of intelligent life forms. Iris provides a broader cosmic perspective, stating that humans are not the first species to venture from their solar system in search of other worlds and extraterrestrial life. However, she suggests that such species full of excessive pride and arrogance inevitably encounter the purifying fire of Prometheus, in this case, the Xenomorphs. This fire acts as a galactic cleanser, scouring the universe of species that display parasitic traits, a paradoxical view considering the Xenomorphs' own parasitic cycle of growth. According to her, many of these arrogant species have perished after attempting to exploit the Xenomorphs as weapons. When that failed, they sought to merge with the Xenomorphs, aiming to evolve into superior beings. Yet, this ambition often led to their downfall, illustrating a grim cycle of arrogance and destruction that continues to haunt civilizations that overstep their bounds. On this occasion, Gabriel Cruz inadvertently brought the Xenomorphs to humanity's cradle. It appeared that the woman in the shadows and her brood of Xenomorphs could mark the harrowing conclusion of human destiny. In the Marvel comics, the Xenomorphs assume a role far beyond that of mere parasitic threats. They are depicted as the purging flame, maintaining cosmic order by ensuring millions of species remain in their rightful place, thus preventing any one species from achieving dominance. This was fundamentally the underlying theme of Ridley Scott's 2012 film Prometheus, and it seems the comics have embraced and expanded upon this cinematic concept. Xenomorphs also serve as a cosmic litmus test for advanced worlds and their civilizations. Despite the clear dangers, Weyland Yutani persists in its childlike tampering with fire. Previously, the inner thoughts of a person implanted with a xenomorph embryo were unknown, but these comics have shed light on this experience. In the pages, we witness Gabriel while attempting to rescue his unconscious son with a facehugger attached trying to communicate with him and alleviate his emotional burden by sharing his own past. In this monologue, Gabriel discloses his profound insights about the Xenomorphs gained during his own impregnation. 
He explains that the facehuggers do more than just implant an embryo. They connect the host to the xenomorph hive mind. In his unconscious state, Gabriel not only saw the xenomorphs that decimated his team, but also those light years away, including the creators of the xenomorphs, a tsunami of living nightmares sweeping across the universe. It was then he also perceived a humanoid xenomorph, whom he came to call the Woman in the Shadows. This enigmatic figure, the Woman in the Shadows, was a biomechanical creature with vaguely feminine features. Her slender body boasted elongated fingers akin to those of xenomorphs. She also had curved horns resembling those of a goat, twisting around what seemed to be a biomechanical crown, a sovereign of darkness in the horrific pantheon of the xenomorphs lore. She reportedly haunts the recurring nightmares of those overpowered by face hunters, each victim eerily consistent in their dread-filled testimonies that she was seeking them. Iris Humphreys proclaimed her to represent the inevitable ultimate outcome of humanity's encounter with the xenomorph species, predicting that humans will eventually attempt to merge with the flame they discovered, only to be utterly extinguished. Whether the woman is indeed a tangible entity or merely a construct of the victim's psyche remains a mystery. Why do predators exist? Iris's commentary in the comics suggests that the Xenomorphs act as Prometheus's purging fire for space-faring species. By this logic, the predators should have been eradicated long ago. Yet, the twist lies in the additional narrative she provides. According to her, space-traveling species typically react in two phases upon encountering xenomorphs. First, they attempt to weaponize the xenomorphs, and then they try to assimilate with them to enhance their own species' strength. However, the predators have historically distanced themselves from the xenomorphs, to the extent that they hunt them for sport in ritualistic hunts. This disengagement from the vicious cycle of militarization and assimilation appears to have bolstered their chances of survival. It remains largely unknown whether the predators are aware that this distancing might be the only way to sidestep the xenomorph cycle, or if their cultural practices serendipitously spared them. Amidst these significant revelations, the Alpha Xenomorph emerges as the central figure of the comic series, a pivotal reason why Whale and Yutani mandated Gabriel Cruz's return to Epsilon. Upon his retirement, he left the space station with the Alpha securely contained in stasis. Yet, a fateful error by Danny, Iris, and their companions unwittingly unleashed this formidable Xenomorph, which then underwent rapid maturation. When Cruz and the team eventually confronted the Alpha, it seemed to have reached full maturity, although it was uncertain if its growth potential had been fully realized. Even at this stage of development, the Alpha appeared alarmingly robust and massive. The standard Xenomorph drones, unsettling in their own right, seemed almost tame in comparison to the Alpha, which sported two impressive sets of horns instead of the usual crest, indicating a more humanoid appearance coupled with a muscular and sleek physique. Upon closer inspection, one could almost discern defined abdominals beneath its ribcage and a pair of brawny arms with sculpted biceps. Additionally, the Alpha exhibited a unique psychic connection with the chestburster embryo within Danny. There's a speculation that the Alpha might have been a Praetorian, but this seems unlikely, as Praetorians typically serve as royal guards to a queen, and no queen was mentioned within the Epsilon Station's Xenomorph Hive. Therefore, it's highly plausible that the Alpha is a product of Weyland Yutani's genetic experiments on a xenomorph. Nonetheless, absolute certainty eludes us, and it's conceivable that Alpha represents a naturally occurring variant, given the right conditions. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. We love hearing from our viewers, so please leave a comment and share your ideas for future videos. Thanks for your support, and we can't wait to see you again in our next video.